Hello and welcome to our video summary of the micro stress effect, how little things pile up and create big problems and what to do about it by Rob Cross and Karen Dillon. In this video, we will share five key insights from the book that will help you understand how small moments of stress can pile up and create big problems in our lives, and more importantly, what you can do about it. The book explores the insidious effects of microstress, which is a hidden epidemic of small moments of stress that we encounter every day. Unlike regular stress, which can trigger the normal stress response in our brains to help us deal with it, microstress doesn't always do that. Instead, it slowly infiltrates our minds and accumulates daily, one microstress on top of the other, leading to long-term physical and emotional health issues, as well as a decline in our overall well-being. However, the good news is that once we understand microstress, we can fight back. The authors share insights from their research and compelling interviews with high achievers who've managed to build resilience against microstress, despite the challenges they've faced. They also provide practical tips and strategies that will help us cultivate relationships that enable us to thrive both at work and in life. Rob Cross is the Edward A. Madden Professor of Global Leadership at Babson College and co-founder and director of the Connected Commons, a consortium of over 150 organizations. He is a world-renowned expert in social networks and has published numerous articles and books on the topic. Karen Dillon is a New York Times best-selling author and former editor of Harvard Business Review. She is also a member of the faculty of Intermountain Healthcare Leadership Institute. To get the most out of the book, we highly recommend that you listen to the audiobook version, which you can get for free through our link in the video description. The audiobook version will not only help you deepen your understanding of the insights shared, but also allow you to learn on the go. In this video, we will share five key insights from the book, which will help you combat microstress, build resilience, and find purpose in your life. So, if you want to learn how to overcome microstress and live a better life, then subscribe to our channel and let's get started. One of the key insights from the book The Microstress Effect by Rob Cross and Karen Dillon is that brief, routine interactions with others can actually trigger hours or even days of microstress. This microstress can accumulate and become debilitating, affecting both our physical and emotional health and ultimately contributing to a decline in our overall well-being. To illustrate this point, the authors provide an example of a single email that catapulted Rita and her colleagues into a spiral of panic. The email was a routine request from the new head of marketing, asking various people to help prepare materials for a known presentation. While the email seemed urgent, it lacked detail, leaving every recipient with questions such as when the materials were needed, whether slides or talking points were required, and what time frame should be included. Because the new boss was unfamiliar to the employees, none of them wanted to risk looking inattentive or stupid by asking for clarification, so they tried to figure it out on their own. This led to a flurry of emails across the marketing department as Rita and her colleagues tried to read between the lines and gather the necessary information. In the end, Rita found herself dealing with 34 emails asking for direction or complaining about the timeline. Meanwhile, two people on the email thread had gone ahead and done what they thought the marketing director wanted and forwarded the results to Rita. However, each of them had leveraged different data sources that told an incompatible story. Rita didn't discover this until 6.30 p.m., after a day of firefighting had yanked her from her other priorities. By then, of course, both people had already left for the day. Rita had been looking forward to a peaceful dinner with her teenage son, who had been distant lately, spending most of his time in his room. But her hopes were dashed when she realized she couldn't leave work until she resolved the issue with her colleagues. As she left the office parking lot, she knew she had missed another opportunity to connect with her son. The new marketing director's seemingly simple request for data in a couple of different ways had completely consumed her afternoon and evening. Rita had never considered pushing back, as she had always assumed she could handle any task with her incredible effort. 
but as she drove home, she began to think of all the other things she had missed out on that day because she had been chasing that one email. The author is quoted as for most of us, any given day can be filled with a range of seemingly small requests or priority shifts that upend our day. The authors highlight that most people experience similar situations where seemingly minor requests or changes in priorities disrupt their daily routine. These disruptions can cause individuals to abandon their current tasks, work overtime, and disregard personal relationships. Unfortunately, when faced with these micro-stressors, people often fail to recognize the negative impact they have on their mental and emotional well-being. Instead, they push forward and try to complete their tasks without acknowledging the stress they are experiencing. This approach can lead to physical and emotional exhaustion, impacting the quality of their work and personal life. The impact of tiny moments of stress, also known as micro-stress, may be hard to spot, but it can take a very real toll on our brains and bodies. It's important to pay attention to micro-stress because it's ubiquitous in our daily lives and can be particularly harmful due to its volume, intensity, and pace. According to neuroscientists, micro-stress can happen so quickly in the course of a routine day that it can go unnoticed by our fight-or-flight vigilance systems while still exerting a significant toll on our bodies. Even if our brains barely register these individual micro-stresses, and we may not even remember the original source of the stress, our bodies know that something has happened. Therefore, it's crucial to acknowledge and address the impact of micro-stress on our overall well-being. As the authors point out, microstress is the sand in the gears of our lives. Microstress may seem like a minor issue, but it can have a significant impact on our physical and mental health. These small moments of stress are particularly dangerous because they are so common in our daily lives, and we may not even notice them as they occur. This constant exposure to microstress can eventually take a toll on our bodies and minds. Research has shown that even tiny moments of stress can trigger physiological changes in our bodies. For example, one study found that exposure to social stress within two hours of a meal can cause the body to metabolize the food in a way that adds an additional 104 calories to the meal. If this happens on a daily basis, it could lead to a weight gain of 11 pounds in a year. Microstress can also cause an increase in blood pressure, heart rate, and hormonal or metabolic changes. While our brains may not register these individual microstresses, our bodies do, and they can add up over time. This can lead to burnout, even in high performers who seem to have everything under control. It's easy to dismiss microstress as something we can manage in the moment, but when it accumulates over time, it can become overwhelming. We may find ourselves feeling exhausted, irritable, and unable to focus. This can have a negative impact on our personal and professional lives. It's important to recognize the impact that microstress can have on our health and well-being. Taking steps to manage stress and prioritize self-care can help us cope with the constant barrage of small stressors that we encounter on a daily basis. How many of us have the feeling that we can't even start our own work until the end of the day? or after we spend our day in meetings or chasing requests from others. In today's fast-paced world, we are constantly bombarded by micro-stress that we may not even realize. It is the little things that add up, and before we know it, we are feeling overwhelmed and burnt out. But where does this micro-stress come from? Micro-stress, which we often fail to recognize, can have a significant impact on our overall well-being, despite its seemingly small size. This kind of stress is all around us, embedded into the fabric of our everyday lives. Researchers have identified 14 distinct sources of microstress, which can be broadly categorized into three main groups. The first category of microstress is the kind that drains our capacity to accomplish tasks. These microstresses can be so overwhelming that they can make us feel like we're failing both in our personal and professional lives. We may struggle to complete even the most basic responsibilities in a day, 
as our calendar is constantly filled with tasks that leave us with little to no energy to pursue our own projects. These micro stresses might include being misaligned on priorities or roles with colleagues in a project, working with team members who have different views on what constitutes success, dealing with an unpredictable authority figure who changes their demands frequently, or simply coping with an increase in responsibilities at work or home, such as caring for an aging parent or a child who is struggling in school. These everyday life challenges can accumulate and become a source of micro stress for us and our entire family, creating layer upon layer of stress that we may not even be aware of. The second category. In addition to micro stresses that drain your capacity, there are also micro stresses that deplete your emotional reserves. These internal wells of peace, fortitude, and resilience help you to focus, prioritize, and manage conflict. The people who cause us micro stress are often those who are close to us personally or professionally, which can make the micro stress we feel during our interactions with them even more emotionally complex. Because we can't remove ourselves completely from these individuals, we are constantly navigating interactions that can deplete our emotional reserves. One example of micro stress that depletes emotional reserves is managers who are constantly worried about ensuring that their direct reports are thriving. Another example might be navigating confrontational conversations, not necessarily with a difficult person, but with a colleague who is overloaded and simply trying to get their work done. Additionally, figuring out how to work with new colleagues due to teams being formed and reformed in hectic workplaces can be a source of micro stress. Building trust with new team members takes time and effort, which can be emotionally taxing. The third category. Micro stresses that challenge your identity can be particularly damaging because they undermine your sense of who you are and what you stand for. These micro stresses can come in many forms and can slowly chip away at your motivation and sense of purpose. For example, you may be asked to do work that conflicts with your personal values, such as being part of an aggressive sales team that uses questionable tactics to close deals. This can create an inner conflict between what you know is right and what you are being asked to do, causing a sense of discomfort and stress. Another source of micro stress that challenges your identity could be interactions that undermine your confidence. Perhaps your role at work is constantly changing in ways that make you feel like you are set up to fail, or you receive critical feedback that makes you question your abilities. These experiences can erode your self-confidence and make it difficult to perform at your best. Even changing jobs can be a source of micro stress that challenges your identity. When you move to a new workplace, you may lose the day-to-day -day access to the network of colleagues who supported you at your previous job, leaving you feeling isolated and uncertain. Ultimately, most of us experience multiple forms of micro stress in our day-to-day -day lives, and the cumulative effect can be significant. By recognizing the sources of micro stress and taking steps to manage and mitigate them, we can preserve our sense of self and protect our mental and emotional well-being. These three categories of micro stress identified by research reveal just how pervasive and insidious these small yet damaging stressors can be. Micro stresses that drain your capacity can leave you feeling like you're barely treading water in both your personal and professional life. They can come from feeling misaligned with colleagues, dealing with unpredictable authority figures, or struggling to keep up with a surge in responsibilities. Micro stresses that challenge your identity can slowly chip away at your motivation and sense of purpose. Feeling like your work conflicts with your personal values, having interactions that undermine your confidence, or losing a supportive network of colleagues can all leave you feeling like you're not the person you want to be. Finally, micro stresses that erode your quality of life can have a cumulative impact on your physical and emotional well-being. These micro stresses can come from dealing with a difficult commute, a noisy neighbor, or an unresponsive landlord. They can leave you feeling frustrated, drained, and helpless. By understanding the sources of micro stress and their impact, we can take steps to mitigate their effects and cultivate greater resilience in the face of life's challenges.
The impact of removing even a few negative interactions in your life can be tremendous. The question then becomes, what can we do to address the constant stream of microstress that pervades our daily lives? Traditional advice for improving our overall well-being often involves strategies like mindfulness, meditation, or gratitude, which can help refresh our minds and bodies. While these methods are beneficial, what if we could instead find ways to eliminate some of the microstress we encounter regularly? Research has shown that a negative interaction can be up to five times more impactful than a positive one. This means that by taking steps to eliminate even a few sources of microstress, we can make a significant difference in our lives. Social science research suggests that there are three effective strategies that people can use to reduce their microstress levels. The first strategy involves pushing back on the microstresses we encounter in practical ways. Even small shifts in how we interact with others can quickly counteract microstress and significantly impact our daily lives. For example, learning when and how to say no to small requests, managing our technology and how it notifies and interrupts us, or readjusting relationships to prevent others from placing undue stress on us are all effective strategies for reducing microstress. To effectively manage microstress, it is important to focus on managing the interactions rather than the relationships themselves. Despite conventional wisdom, some of the most significant sources of microstress in our lives come from those we love and care for deeply. For example, a parent may experience microstress from worrying about their child's well-being, helping them with various tasks, or simply absorbing their stress. One way to address these microstresses is by modifying the interactions themselves. For instance, a parent may find that receiving frequent texts from the child venting about small issues can lead to hours of worry. By discussing this pattern and finding a new way to communicate, such as only contacting the parent for important matters, they can remove this source of microstress while maintaining the strength and importance of their relationship. By examining the specific interactions that cause microstress in our lives, we can identify opportunities for change that can have a significant impact on our well-being. It is not always necessary to remove entire relationships or avoid challenging situations. Sometimes, small adjustments to the way we interact with others can make all the difference. As the authors quote, it is the trick in this all is to manage the interactions and not the relationships. Being mindful of the microstress you may be causing others is the second strategy for reducing microstress in your own life. Surprisingly, research shows that the microstress we experience is often the same as the microstress we cause in others. Nobody wants to be the person who is causing others stress, but the good news is that reducing the microstress we cause for others not only helps them, but also helps ourselves. When we create microstress for others, it can boomerang back on us in various ways. For example, if we push a child too hard to keep up with their homework, they may become more resistant and difficult to work with. Similarly, if we are causing our best employee stress by not considering their workload, they may become disengaged or even leave the company, ultimately adding stress to our own life. Therefore, emitting less microstress means that we are likely to receive less in return, resulting in a more positive and less stressful environment for everyone involved. The final strategy found in research involved finding ways to rise above microstress. One reason some microstresses affect us is simply that we let them. You can learn to keep some of them in perspective and let things that used to bother you just roll off your back. This is not just a call to see life through rose-colored glasses. We recognize the toll that microstress can take on all of us. In order to effectively manage microstress, it is important to develop a multidimensional life. This involves pursuing activities and group experiences that create a rich and diverse network of connections with others. By doing so, we can better cope with microstress and put it in perspective. Those who are able to cope with microstress the best are often the happiest people, as they make a conscious effort to shape their lives in a way that helps them better manage stress. 
whether it's participating in a weekly basketball game or maintaining a group chat with close friends finding dimensionality in our lives can provide us with moments of genuine connection and help us recognize when things are not worth getting stressed over by building multidimensional lives we can help inoculate ourselves against the negative impact of micro stress and lead more fulfilling lives building on the previous point Research has shown that the happiest and most resilient individuals are those who have a rich, diverse, and multidimensional life. These people not only actively seek out opportunities for authentic connections and shared experiences with others, but they also consciously work towards creating a well-rounded and fulfilling life. This means pursuing interests and hobbies that are different from their work or primary responsibilities, spending time with friends and family, and engaging in activities that help them relax and unwind. When we have a multidimensional life, we are better equipped to cope with the micro-stresses that inevitably come our way. We have a broader perspective and can see beyond the immediate stressors to the larger picture. Additionally, these varied experiences help us build resilience and develop a sense of purpose and meaning beyond our work or personal responsibilities. For example, someone who is passionate about painting might regularly attend art classes or join a local art community. In doing so, they not only develop their creative skills, but also expand their social circle and find a sense of belonging. Similarly, someone who enjoys playing sports might join a recreational league or start a pickup game with friends every week. These experiences provide an outlet for physical activity, social interaction, and stress relief. In essence, finding dimensionality in our lives means intentionally seeking out and prioritizing activities and connections that enrich our lives and help manage stress. By doing so, we can not only cope better with micro-stress, but also find greater fulfillment and happiness in our lives. Taking steps to add dimensionality to your life can have a significant positive impact on your well-being, even if it's in small moments. It doesn't have to be a major time commitment, but finding ways to connect with others can make a big difference. For example, a neurosurgeon discovered the joy of playing music again by joining a local band that met on weekends, and connecting with younger musicians brought a new dimension to his life. Similarly, one person found pleasure in working in his yard and connecting with neighbors, while another played soccer with parents and children, building new relationships, improving his physical well-being, and spending time with his own children. For some, maintaining lifelong friendships through texts or other virtual forums was all it took to add dimensionality to their lives. Whatever it may be, finding ways to connect with others in small moments can help manage micro-stress and improve overall well-being. This is why it's essential to intentionally cultivate those relationships and activities that bring us joy and connection. It doesn't have to be a major time commitment or even a big change in our routine. It can be as simple as finding a way to connect with others over a shared interest or activity. It can be as small as sending a text to an old friend to catch up or taking a few minutes to chat with a colleague at work. When we intentionally make time for these connections and activities, we create a multidimensional life that allows us to thrive, even in the midst of micro-stress. It's important to remember that we don't have to do it all alone, either. Sometimes, the best way to manage microstress is to reach out to others for support and connection. Whether it's seeking help from a trusted friend or colleague or seeking professional help, there are many resources available to help us manage the stresses of life. Ultimately, it's up to each of us to find the balance that works best for us, to prioritize our well-being and the relationships that matter most, and to continue to find joy and purpose in the small moments of life. With intentional effort and a commitment to connection, we can thrive in the face of micro-stress and live rich, multidimensional lives. These were the five key takeaways from the micro-stress effect, how little things pile up and create big problems and what to do about it by Rob Cross and Karen Dillon. We hope that you found them helpful in understanding how micro-stress can affect our lives and how we can combat it. To recap, Microstress is a hidden epidemic of small moments of stress that can accumulate daily and lead to physical and emotional health issues and a decline in our overall well-being. 
The source of microstress is often the people we are closest to, such as our friends, family, and colleagues. However, once we understand the science behind microstress and the secrets of high achievers who've managed to build resilience against it, we can fight back and find purpose in our lives. Rob Cross and Karen Dillon explain the phenomenon of microstress through fresh research and compelling interviews with high achievers who've endured their share of microstress but have still managed to cultivate relationships that enable them to thrive both at work and in life. The book shares best practices that show us how to build resilience against microstress and ultimately how to find purpose, which helps us break free from this quietly invasive force that's stealing our life. To get the most out of the book, we highly recommend that you grab the audiobook version for free through our link in the video description. Listening to the audiobook will not only deepen your understanding of the book's insights, but also allow you to learn on the go. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe to our channel for more book summaries and leave a comment below to let us know what book you would like us to cover next. Thank you for watching and take care.